transmission I built for this thing, it's got like 2,000 kilometers on it now and still no issues at all. And I've really been beating the hell out of it too. Like tons of burnouts and drifting it and just like, I mean, I got to get the tuning dialed in for this thing. So I really got to beat the hell out of it to make sure everything's working properly and no issues at all. So I'll take you for a ride in this thing in a minute here. But today I've got a billet aluminum valve body to put in here. Well, it's like a stock valve body, but it has a billet uh, section here on the bottom to stiffen it up. Oh, check this out. Whoa. From Next Gen Diesel. So I was just going to put one of those, uh, like, well, I have one right here. Like a BD protect plate gasket kit in there. So you can just, it shows you where to drill out the ports and it gives you some gasket kits and a steel so you can get the full 250 PSI line pressure in the forward goose. So that that does a lot for the truck, but I got talking to Nate and he figured we should show everybody what this thing can do. So that's what we're doing today. We'll put this in my truck and see what happens. I mean, there's a lot of claims that this thing has that I would have been able to achieve just by tuning. So I'm not really sure, we'll see. It's gonna be really interesting to see what this thing can do because I mean, the advantage of it is I'll definitely be able to turn up my line pressure a lot more without warping the plate or anything like that. But, I don't know. We'll see. That's what's, go that's what's going on today, though. That's going to go in my truck. And I wanted to show you this, too. This truck here, too. It's my friend's truck. It's a 2014 Cummins. It's, oh man, it's a pretty nice truck. I'm pretty ruined now after driving this thing around the last two weeks. I don't even want to get in mine now, like, look how nice this thing is. So uh, the deal with this thing is, because as you guys know, I've been working on the tuning for the 10 to 12 trucks here, which by the way is like completely done, ready to go, like you can get it on my website right now. So my friend saw me working on that and he wanted his truck done, but these have a different ECM, like slightly. So I got, got to work on this thing and I got it fully deleted. As you can see, I got the DEF tank here, and then there's like, this goes to like the doser injector thing, and all the stuff under hood's like the same as the 12, and then all, here's all the exhaust, and there's like the doser injector. So I got all that stuff deleted. It's definitely more complicated than the 12 trucks, because like, check it out, they got like a whole computer and stuff I had to delete, because you unplug that, and it's not happy. <laughs> But yeah, I got all that done. Got a full five inch straight pipe on it. I got all the tuning dialed for these things with switch on the fly. Check it out, fire it up. Let's go push to start. And I got it so the DEF reads full with no tank in it. It's awesome. My tuning for these trucks is ready to go too. That's kind of why I haven't been uploading any videos lately. See the exhaust brake is already turned on too because I have it so the exhaust brake stays turned on even if you turn the key off. All kinds of sweet stuff. So yeah, I've been playing with this thing the last couple weeks here. It's a pretty awesome truck. And it's all ready to go. Tuning's ready to go for these trucks, and tuning's ready to go for those trucks. So I can definitely help you out if you need tuning on your fourth gen now. So check out check out my website, optimalwelding.com. But today I'm putting this damn valve body on my truck from uh, Next Gen Diesel. Here, let's look at it again. So yeah, that's what's happening right now. I'm gonna get this truck out of the way this truck in, start draining the fluid, and uh, throw this thing in, see what it can do for us. Okay, I figure I better show how it drives here with just a bit of transmission tuning and stock valve body before I go and put that other valve body in. You can see I got the shifts a little bit more firm from stock, and I definitely have the pressure turned up as far as I can turn it up. See, I think that was third gear, and now we're gonna hit fourth gear here. 
kilometers fourth gear and then there's lock up in fourth gear at like 75 kilometers an hour check this out made it so the exhaust brake works all the way down until 20 kilometers an hour now I might run out of speed I'm going up a hill but I should downshift and keep going yeah there we go and then uh, watch if I hit the tow haul mode now to lock up the torque converter in second gear. Ready? First gear right now. Second. Locked up in second. Third gear. Still locked up. See, it doesn't even unlock between shifts. And it doesn't defuel between shifts or anything. I pretty much got full control over these CM2200s now. I got no limiters in any way. Full fueling right to like 160 mm3 and and 1,200 foot-pounds, so pretty much make this truck do anything I want it to do now. Oh yeah, and I got uh, the low reverse clutch locked up too in first gear. Check this out. So it does awesome burnouts. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's starting to... Uh, Axle hop a little bit for me because I gotta put some traction bars in this thing still. But yeah, the truck's running really good and uh, the transmission's running really good too. You see, normally the exhaust brake would turn off right now, but now the truck will downshift again and keep exhaust braking. already locked up like straight away as soon as you start driving locked up but if I don't want to be like that I can just click the tow hole button turn that off and then I'll just drive like a normal truck again here see look just unlock the torque converter and now we're just driving all normal again See, torque converter unlocked. Or go to haul mode. Just locks it up straight away. Now we're locked up again. So yeah, um, I don't know what else I can show you right now in regards to the transmission. I got the whole engine tuning side of things. Definitely good to go on these trucks and on the 13 to 17 trucks as well. They're good to go as well. But I'm gonna work on the 13 to 17 transmission tuning a little more, but this this truck I pretty much got it figured out So yeah, I'm gonna go back to the shop now and uh, Get that valve body put in and we'll see what it can do for us Okay, I got my Cummins in here and the other Cummins outside and I got a new bucket because I'm going to try to reuse this fluid. It only has 2,000 kilometers on it. So you can see I have all the bolts taken out except for two on the front and two on the rear and they're, they're not even in. It's just the RTV is holding it in there now. So this is like the worst part. You got to kind of pry on it and it, I don't know, it's a hit or miss. I might make a huge mess or I might catch the fluid and be able to reuse it. We'll see. So, that's what I'm doing now. Well, I did the best I could. I got most of it. <laughs> so, I cleaned that mess up. And, uh, yeah, check it out. The fluid, super clean. Like, nothing on the magnet at all. So, yeah. My transmission is definitely holding together. Okay, I got that filter ripped out of there. It's just this... Just this one screw. And then, uh... Just about to pull the valve body out. It's super simple. You just gotta get an 8mm and take out these 
couple bolts around the outside and the whole thing will just fall straight out and uh, make sure you remember to unplug it first it's probably gonna be a little tight on this uh, plug here but you just kind of wiggle the shit out of it and it'll fall right out okay I got that thing out of there it's just uh, these six bolts and it pretty much just falls right out super easy I'm just checking out the differences here you can see the the bottom plate there is much larger and this plate too is much larger I really wish I knew more about what was really going on in this thing but they they wouldn't really give me too much information about it so yeah I just gotta fix uh it looks like they just had like an afterthought to their design here and they drilled, drilled a hole here but they forgot to countersink the burrs off of it so I'm just gonna fix that real quick if anybody knows what that uh what that does, let me know, because he wouldn't tell me what this really does, so I'm interested to know. We'll probably just go do some more research and figure that out, but yeah, what does that hold do? I'd be interested to know. So, um, apparently this doesn't fit in the truck with the stock pan, because it's too big, so... He was supposed to send me a pan, but I guess he forgot, so I'm going to borrow my friend's pan here. It's a Mag High Tech. Pretty nice units. It's supposed to go on this truck out here, but it's not really in any rush to get it on there. So I'm gonna borrow it for now, and then I'll get him another one on the way. But uh, yeah, so I think I'm ready to put it back in. It's, as you can see, it's a super easy job, and I mean it's pretty much the best thing you could do for these transmissions without dropping the transmission out of the truck. So if you really want to make sure your transmission doesn't break, I would definitely put one of these in there. But they are kind of expensive. There is cheaper alternatives like that kit over there that I'm going to be putting in that truck. So I'm going to make another video showing you how to do that. It's more work, obviously, because you have to rebuild the whole valve body yourself, but it's also much less money too, so, or way less money. So yeah, I'm going to get this thing back in there and we'll go from there. All right, well, I got that thing up in there, torque to spec. Pretty simple. I just gotta put the filter on there now. Somehow, I don't remember. It's gotta go somewhere, probably in here or something. So, I'll get that filter in there, and then I'm gonna see if I can put the stock pan back on, but it's probably not gonna fit, so we'll go from there. Okay, well, I don't know if there's some trick to this or something, but <laughs> the filter doesn't even fit, man. Like, look, it's. It bottoms out on the valve body before it even fits in there. It doesn't, like, there's just no way for it to go in there. And I tried, like, putting it on an angle, like, it's kind of hard to show, but I tried to put it on an angle and slamming it up in there, but then the filter's, like, hanging down, like, super far, and it's just not right at all. So, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna message Nate and see what he says about it, because it's definitely not gonna work like this. Alright, well, that filter is supposed to come with some attachment thing, but I definitely didn't get one, apparently, so I don't know if he just forgot, or it fell out of the bottom of the box, maybe? <laughs> so, yeah, I think it just fell out of the bottom of the box, so I just got unlucky on that one. So I'm waiting for the filter attachment and bracket to show up. It's supposed to have a little metal machined piece that goes onto here and extends this longer. And there's a bracket for this too. So that does make a lot more sense. Yeah, because uh, this would definitely not work right now as is. So it's kind of a bummer. I'm gonna have to wait like a week for that thing to get here or maybe longer. So I could put my truck back together, but then I have to fill it out with fluid and then take it apart next week. So I'm just gonna leave it, push it out of the way for now and do some more work to the 14. Because I, I have a lot more tuning I could do. I mean, the, the tuning for both these trucks is just completely dialed, ready to go now for ASINs, 68 RFEs, manual trans trucks, everything. But there's always more you can do, like uh, today I think I'm going to delete the turbo off this thing. Well, not really delete it, but just write a tune that makes it so the truck's happy with not having the VGT turbo on there, because if you want to put an aftermarket turbo on or like a big uh, compound system or something like that, as soon as you unplug that VGT turbo and the turbo speed sensor, it's going to get real unhappy and throw a bunch of codes and stuff like that. So these are all things that I just got to do 
just to make sure I can tune like every kind of truck no matter what setup it has. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'll get this thing started up. We'll pull the unplug the sensors off the turbo, see what kind of codes it throws, and then uh we'll go find the tables to fix that and get rid of it all. It it's it's not really as simple as just turning it off. Like there's no on off switch. You gotta reprogram the truck to think that it never existed in the first place. Because if it doesn't look for it, it doesn't know it's not there and it'll never throw a code. Alright, so you can see here. Uh, can you see here? Yeah. Turbo actuator is unplugged and the turbo speed sensor down there is also unplugged. So let's see what it does. I just realized I'm gonna have to delete the uh, drive pressure sensor too because if you put an aftermarket manifold on you probably wouldn't have that. So I'll do that too. That one's really easy to do. I already did that when I was messing around before. So we'll see what this thing throws for codes. Key on. Let's see if it's unhappy up here at all. Well, it didn't throw a C dealer now message. Let's see what we got here. No codes? What do you mean no codes? I just unplugged the turbo. Okay, let's see. still doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Maybe I already deleted it. I probably did. I deleted a bunch of random stuff, so. Anything that was not related to this thing going fast and running good, I deleted it. So I might have already got rid of that. Yeah, because I, I didn't want... The goal was I wanted to write tuning that would never, ever, ever leave you stranded because this Every day I see it, people are like, oh, my truck threw a C dealer now message, I can't drive it, blah, blah, blah. So, my tuning, never gonna throw that stuff ever, even, like, look at that, I just unplugged the turbo and it didn't even throw a code or anything. So, I don't know, I'm gonna go take it for a little drive like this, I guess. Listen how loud it is with the veins open. So far, it really doesn't seem to care about, uh, oh, there we go. I got a code. Let's see what it says. Let's pull over here. See, it took me a while. I had to drive down the road for it to actually throw the code. You can see here, turbo percent, actual and desired is zero. And the turbo speed. Whoa, it's giving me a turbo speed, but it's unplugged. So maybe, it said zero before, so maybe it must have a, uh, like a virtual turbo speed that it estimates sometimes. So that's probably what threw the code. Let's go see. Because there was no code a second ago. Lost communication with the turbo. And turbocharger speed circuit low. So yeah, go back to the shop now and uh, start finding the stuff to fix that and we'll get it out of there. All right, I think I found all the stuff I need to delete this turbo. So I built up a tune, put it on this autocal so we'll get this flashed in. Well, it's hard to see. I mean, there's not really anything to see here. I just gotta go down here to program full, 44, go. And then it just does its thing. And uh, yeah, we'll have to wait till that's done and we'll take it for another drive and hopefully that turbo's not giving us any problems now. 
All right, tune just finished flashing, so let's see if it fires up without any issues, first of all. Okay, it doesn't seem too angry so far. That's good. So yeah, I'll take it for a little drive and I'll see if I can get further away from the shop this time without it throwing an error. Okay, this is the same spot I started the video last time. Let's see if we make it further. It threw the code right here last time. But I'm still going. Yes! Okay, well I don't know how long I'm gonna have to drive for it to throw a code here, so... I'm just gonna keep driving here and I'll let you know what happens. Okay, well I've driven like 17 kilometers and it definitely hasn't given me any issues with throwing any codes. But I'm interested to know what happens if I push the exhaust brake button. It says it's turned on. It hasn't thrown any codes yet. I mean, it's not gonna turn on because the damn thing's unplugged, but. I was just wondering if it was going to throw an error if I turned it on. Maybe I should go and remove the functionality of the switch so you can't even turn it on. I think I'm going to do that, but yeah, no errors. No errors so far, so we're, we're doing pretty good. Okay, we're just coming up on where I did that burnout earlier in the video here. Oh, here it is right there. It's <laughs> hilarious. Oh, yeah. Pretty good one. But yeah, still no codes on this thing. And I've driven like, I don't know, 25 kilometers now? So yeah, it's probably get pretty good to go. So when I get back to the shop, I'm gonna plug all the turbo back in and reflash the tune back so it has a turbo again because this thing sucks with no exhaust brake and no low end power. It's not very fun. So yeah, get it all fixed up and then on to the next job. All right, I got the normal tune flashed back in, plugged everything back in, so brake's working as it should. I got it going a little slower on these trucks too than uh, than it would from factory. Normally it'd cut off about there. So it should downshift and go again. So yeah, all back to normal. So on to the next thing. Okay, well my filter attachment should be getting here tomorrow for that thing. So today I'm gonna work on this 2016 truck. It's got the ASIN transmission in it, which is pretty interesting to me because it's the first one I've done. I've, as you can see, I've got that 68 RFE 2014 out there dialed and I got the 68 RFE 10 to 12s and everything dialed like that, but this was the first ASIN truck I've done. And I went and unplugged all the sensors and everything that I wanted to get rid of, like this stuff here and everything off the exhaust and the, the DEF tank and all that stuff, so I built a tune and I flashed it in here and check this out. Sounds perfect, no problems at all. No codes. Sounds great. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Now I definitely know I can do all the ASIN trucks. I can do all the 68 RFE trucks. I can definitely do manual transmission trucks too, obviously, because I don't have any transmission tuning at all. So yeah, I'm just waiting for this thing to cool down now and I'm gonna start ripping off all the garbage from under there. Hey, whoa. I don't think those are stock. Maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I'm gonna get rid of all the garbage under there, put a four inch straight pipe on it, get rid of the urea or the DEF, or whatever you want to call it. And then yeah, and this truck will be running good too. Okay, I just got that light bar installed there and wired it up to the auxiliary switches on the dash in here. A pretty good little setup having that there. So you just hit this. And then we got light. So yeah, this thing's pretty much good to go. I got all the, the DEF tank pulled out and all the exhaust pulled off and everything. Damn good. Here, let's. Use this a standard delete. I got rid of the 
throttle valve, blocked up the EGR. Just got rid of all the uh, EGR cooler and everything. Just put that bracket in there. Looking much better. That yeah, sounds much better too. Well, two and a half weeks later, this thing finally showed up. It got stuck in customs twice. I don't know why, but it's just a little piece of metal. But yeah, pretty annoying because it set me back a really, really long time, but whatever. Finally got it, so see that makes sense why it doesn't fit. It needs this extension. So I'm going to get this thing put back together today finally, and uh, yeah, we'll actually be able to see if it's any good or if it's garbage. All right, I got this filter attachment thing in there. You can see it's not easy to get in there. It's a really tight fit, and there's this small little bracket that goes here. It's kind of holding the filter kind of away from the sharp edge. You can see there, and then there's just a spacer under the screw. I mean, I think that's the way it's supposed to go. There's no instructions or anything, so I'm just kind of figuring it out, but that's it's pretty in there. It's not going anywhere now, so. I'm gonna get that pan. It's just over here. I got a Mag High Tech pan here. Because the stock pan definitely will not fit. Even without the filter, the stock pan does not fit over the valve body. So you need an aftermarket pan. So I'm gonna try to get that thing fit and go from there. Oh yeah, check it out. I tinted my front windows. I couldn't couldn't stand no tint any longer. Okay, well, this thing here is hitting on the filter, so it looks like I'm going to need to take about three quarters of an inch off, so I'm going to snip that out of there and hopefully it fits. Alright, well, I cut this piece out because it definitely needed that piece to go before it would fit, but then I come to find out it still does not fit. It's hitting on, the, on this, and this still needs to go another at least half, three quarters of an inch before it would fit on the truck. So I'm gonna have to cut this filter down too, I guess. There's no way that this can go in any further. I had it all the way in there. There's no possible way it can go any further. So I guess I'm just gonna have to cut this filter too. So you gotta cut your filter, you gotta cut your pan. It's just, it's pretty ridiculous, man. Okay, I finally got this thing to fit on. I just had to cut off about that much about half an inch of the bottom of the filter and three quarters of an inch off the pan. And now it finally bolts on, so yeah. I'm gonna get it all bolted up and fill it with fluid and take it for a test rate. Okay, I got this thing filled up with fluid again and I'm just out for a little cruise here and just keeping an eye on all my pressures and making sure it's actually keeping up. So I'm not gonna go too hard on it yet. I'm gonna go back to the shop and we'll have a look at the data and I'll show you what's going on and then uh, I'll flash a new tune in with more pressures so we can fully take advantage of this valve body. And then we'll go from there. Okay, I'm just checking out the data here between the before and after. This is before I put the valve body in, this is after. And I've already noticed it does respond to pressure changes faster now. Like, it, much, much faster than before. Like, this is all the old pressures before. You can see line pressure desired, line pressure actual. So. You can see here, before the stock valve body can only make 160 PSI, so you can see I was commanding 170, but no matter what, it just, it would never get there, you see? There's a hole pulled, it's just kind of around 160, 150, it would never get there. But now, on this new valve body, I haven't changed the tune in any way, but you can see I'm commanding 170, but it's, it's actually doing 170 now, no problem. A couple spots it was doing 180, so... That, that part of the thing, that part of the valve body is good to go, but there's no surprise there. So now I'm actually going to come in here and turn this line pressure desired up to like, I don't know, maybe we'll start with like 200 PSI and then we'll go take it for a run and see how it drives. But yeah, driving it around so far, I didn't really feel any differences. Like it, it felt fine, but on the logs here, I can definitely see it's responding to changes a lot quicker. So I'm going to ride a new tune flash in the truck real quick and then 
yeah, we'll go take it for another rip, see how it goes. All right, well, I got that tune flashed in, and it's running at 200 PSI now, and it feels great. I don't feel any problems or anything like that, but I want to drive for at least a week and get a good feel for it, and uh, I'll make another video next week. I'm putting a, doing some more valve body work to another truck, and then I'll update you in that video what my thoughts are on this billet, billet valve body, but so far, it definitely seems to be doing what it claims it can do. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to drive down this road here and just do a little bit of a burnout for the end of the video here and then uh, yeah that's pretty much it for this one so like the video if you liked it and uh, subscribe so you don't miss next week's video because I'm gonna do some more valve body work and I'll let you know if I like this thing if it's working good or if it's not or whatever I'll let you know so yeah don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell too <laughs>